HFI welded pipe production using the high frequency induction process. A knowledge floater by Manisman Line Pipe, a Zaltz Gitter Group company, with audios, animations, and videos. A brief description of the welding process. The starting materials for the production of longitudinally welded steel pipe at Manisman Line Pipe are hot, wide strip coils of a suitable width. The process is subdivided into three steps. Shaping of the butt welded endless strip to form an open pipe, the actual welding process and annealing of the weld to obtain the desired microstructure. This is followed by size rolling to the final diameter, finishing and final inspection. The basics of HFI welding. To start with, the strip is shaped to an open pipe. This is done continuously in small steps to ensure a smooth process and a uniform, perfectly round pipe. The next step is contact-free heat input by high-frequency induction of an electromagnetic field Before we go on, let's take a look at the theory behind inductive heat input. The eddy current generated in the pipe by the inductor coil always seeks out the shortest path to form a circuit. Accordingly, it flows around the back of the pipe into one strip edge and along that strip edge towards the welding point. From there, it flows back towards its starting point. So remember, the high-frequency alternating current flows around the pipe circumference until it reaches one strip edge and then back along the opposite strip edge. The reversal point is the welding point. From the flow splitting point, the current flows to the weld. Please note, the higher the frequency of the induced alternating current, the greater the density of the eddy current and the more strongly will it be forced towards the steel surface, that is, the strip edges. This phenomenon is called skin effect. See the knowledge floater induction technology. To produce the weld, the heated strip edges are squeezed together. The pressure required for this is generated by the side and especially the top rollers. By the way, the impeder shown in the schematic on the right is part of the electrical system. It has a ferrite core to prevent leakage current circuit on the pipe inside surface. High frequency induction welding is classified as a resistance pressure welding process because, on the one hand, heating of the material is affected by high frequency current and the material's resistance, and, on the other, it applies pressure. The video shows the production of high strength steel pipe by HFI welding at a speed of 25 meters per minute. The flash generated on the inside and outside surfaces during welding is scraped off with special tools. The exact electric settings depend on a variety of factors, such as the specified pipe diameter and wall thickness, the width and temperature of the strip, the shaping geometry, the material, and the optimum welding speed. The welding process generates a typical solidification structure in the heat-affected zone. Here, the mechanical and technological properties are not up to the specified requirements, and so additional heat treatment, post-weld annealing, is necessary. At MLP, this refinement is effected in two steps. The relevant heat curves are shown in the diagram. The annealing restores the predominantly bainitic martensitic structure of the weld area to its original ferritic perlitic condition. In the annealing line, heat input into the weld area is also done by means of induction. Adequate annealing time and through annealing across the wall thickness is ensured by an array of induction coils arranged in sequence just above the weld area. Photoelectric scanning of a pilot line applied after welding ensures that the inductors are precision guided centrally above the weld. Continuous temperature measurements and control loops allow the annealing temperature to be kept within tight limits.
deviations from the specified temperature window are automatically paint marked on the pipe string. For individual pipe tracking purposes, they are also logged in the mill data acquisition system together with their location. This makes sure that even in the case of high strength steel grades and great wall thicknesses, the mechanical technological properties in the weld area match those of the base material. The finishing line completes the processing steps to prepare the pipes for the customer's application. It includes the following operations. Cutting to length as specified by the customer, pipe end beveling as a preparation for stringing by means of girth welds, non-destructive ultrasonic testing of the weld and pipe ends, hydrostatic internal pressure testing, geometric checking and pipe marking. In addition, the pipes are coated and or lined to the customer's specifications. Available options include a multi-layer coating for protection against corrosion and mechanical impact or a cement mortar lining for drinking water pipes. Longitudinally welded steel pipe for cost-effective pipeline construction under punishing conditions. Three-layer plastic coating consisting of an epoxy resin primer on the steel surface, an adhesive layer for reliable adhesion between the primer and the polyethylene top layer for top quality, highly effective corrosion protection, guaranteeing a long service life. Cement mortar lining for internal corrosion protection and superior hygienic properties. A fiber cement mortar coat for added external protection against mechanical damage to the plastic coating. Application areas for HFI welded steel pipes include pipelines for the oil and gas industry, river crossings, pipes for public utility projects for gas, water and district heat supplies, as well as sewer pipes and piping systems for engineering purposes and the chemical industry. A cross section through an oil field drill pipe string illustrates the wide variety of tube and pipe products used in the oil and gas sector. Further applications include steel structures made from round, square and rectangular tubes for the construction industry, for shipbuilding, for crane construction or for offshore wind turbines. Not forgetting the many fair and exhibition buildings, sports centres and stadium roofs.